Pat Farball with St. Francis head men's basketball coach Rob Kremel home for five of the next six games. We'll be here at Stokes beginning with Bryant on Thursday, February 3rd. We're taping this on February 1st. Then it's a 2 p.m. matinee against Merrimack on Saturday. Both those games fans can be seen on NEC Front Row. The team is coming off a 71 to 54 loss at Mount St. Mary's on January 29th. Max Land led the way with 17 points. Good shooting, six of 12 from the field. Ramir Dixon Conover was also in double figures with 11. Josh and Miles had seven each. But I wanna ask you, Rob, uh, and we've talked about this. Our rebounding, is, it's been a bit of a yo-yo this year. Uh, in the wins here at home against the Blue Devils and the Pioneers, combined plus 18. And then in the two games last week, we were out-rebounded by an average of 15 against Wagner the Mountain. And that's really been a good barometer. When your team rebounds, we're in a position to be successful. You must have been in our locker room uh, Sunday afternoon after we got back to know what we're talking about. Dave gives us our stats after every game, and I go through them, and you can kind of mix the numbers however you want to tell the story as a coach that you want to tell, right? You can, you can maneuver those. But we put two numbers up on the board, uh, well, a, a group of two numbers, in our wins and in our losses, our rebounding numbers. And there is a distinct difference. When we rebound, we give ourselves a chance to win for two reasons. Number one, the other team isn't getting second opportunities at their rim. And number two, we have a chance then to get out and, and play in the open court a little bit. So it's a critical number, it's a critical stat for us. And we challenge the team over the weekend to embrace that part of it because there's really no scheme for that, right? It's We've shown that we can do it and now we gotta do it every single time regardless of the opponent. Early in the year, we, we rebounded with some pretty big physical teams. At the same time though, it doesn't always come down to size. It doesn't always come down to strength. It doesn't always come down, it's just the desire. That's an, that's an Eric Taylor term, the desire to rebound. And so that's something we're gonna be looking for here as we enter uh, the home stretch, um, both um, literally and figuratively really with, with five of our next six at home, but really as we end the, uh, the season here is coming up with, you know, finding a way to get the momentum, especially from the, uh, the rebounding side of it. Now the one thing, that you've been doing really well is protecting the ball. You go on the road at Wagner, 10 and 0 now, and you go down to Mount St. Mary's, you only turn it over 13 times in you know, a tough place to play up on Staten Island and just a dozen down at the Mount. So uh, you protect the basketball, you give yourself a chance to win. Those are two stats that for my time here have been, they're, they're numbers that I look at. You know, I'm, I'm a de oh, defensive rebounding and turnover percentage because if you can defensive rebound, it leads to easy opportunities in transition, right? And it prevents the other team from either getting layups, threes, or fouls, which is what happens most times on offensive rebound. And then when you take care of the ball, you know, the, the percentages sometimes aren't 50-50, but you at least have a chance to make that shot, and that's important for us. And so those statistics, it's good that we're taking care of the ball, especially on those games when we're not rebounding the ball, right. ball particularly well, but you know, those are two numbers that'll be critical for us going down the stretch. All right, so let's, uh, one thing in the Mount St. Mary's game I want to touch on, your team wore bow ties to honor Jim Phelan. It was the first game between the Flash and the Mount since Coach Phelan died last June. And if you're a basketball fan, you probably have some familiarities. 18th all-time in wins as of today, 830. When he hit 800, he was one of just a few uh, back in uh, his final season, 2003. 49 years, 54 to 2003. Uh, that was pretty special, uh, a neat way to honor such a legendary figure, not only in our league, but in the game of college hoops. How lucky are we to have someone like that in our league, right? You know, someone that not only did great things in Emmitsburg, Maryland, and in the Northeast Conference, but when you look at what he did nationally, his numbers are up there with, you know, the, the, the Krzyzewskis, and, you know, when you talk about the, the, the legacy, the Woodens, you know, the, the people that he impacted, you know, the, the names of college basketball, you have to keep Coach Phelan in that conversation. And he was just a, sh a short car ride down in, uh, in our league. And so for us, you know, there are a lot of people still connected with Coach Phelan, obviously the athletic director, a good friend of mine, Kevin Robinson. You know, there are people down there that, that know Coach Phelan and obviously Dan and, you know, and his staff and what you know, he meant to the, to the program. It, you know, it's, it was only fitting. It, you know, to, to be able to honor him in that way, it was just, a, I think, a, you know, a small gesture that, you know, I played against him. As an assistant coach, I coached against him, and you know, a few opportunities as a head coach that when he would come to the game, and I told Kevin, you know, my, my friend, and, you know, and, and Lynn, um, his daughter, that, that he always made you feel like a million bucks. 
you know, regardless, I mean, you would have no idea that he won 800 some college basketball games, but any interaction, he made you feel important. And you know, the the, the impact that he had on the court as a as a basketball coach, you can read the records, you can look at the numbers, you can look at the wins, you can look at the all conference, you can look at the championships. But you know, who he was as a person and what he meant to the Mountain community. You know, if, if it was a few stressful moments of tying that bow tie, it was well worth it, Pat. The academic yeah. all-American oh, figuring out how Ooh. to do it. Thank goodness for YouTube, because those <laughs> diagrams did not help. <laughs> hey, this guy, uh, 10 and 5 against Coach Phelan. You were 5 and 4 as a player, and 5 out of 6 when you were assistant coach on Bobby Jones staff. Oof. Must and have been some lucky nights for me, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, one backstory, obviously, we're in the Stokes Center. Coach Phelan's first game as a head coach back in 1954 was against St. Francis College of Brooklyn. He wore a bow tie. He won that game. His next game was against St. Francis College of Pennsylvania. He wore a bow tie. Maurice Stokes got in foul trouble that night. You know Bill Soller. I know Bill Soller. You have two BG guys. He played at Old Altoona Catholic. And Bill, I can still remember him complaining. He said they had the Mount President. And they had the head janitor referee and Stokes got in foul trouble. Phelan wears the bow tie, picks up his second win, then he tells his wife, I'm gonna keep the bow tie. I had a great conversation with, uh, with Lynn, um, the director of athletics and obviously uh, his daughter. And, and I told that story and I didn't realize and I brought up your book and the conversation we had and she brought up the, uh, the officiating, the, the wondering whether or not Maurice was really on the court as much as he should have been. And so it was a neat laugh for us after the game, but you know, certainly to connect those two programs that way. And thank you for bringing that to my attention. I mean, obviously I've read your book now several times Times, but it's something that as we were going through the, the craziness of the game in preparation, I completely forgot about. And you know, what a neat way to kind of tie it all together. I can still picture or hear Bill in that sort of cantankerous <laughs> voice recalling that moment many years ago. All right, it's a tough week, Rob. Uh, Bryant comes in. They're 9 and 1. They're game back of Wagner. They got Peter Kiss. He leads the league in scoring almost 23 a game. They got Hall Elijahs. He leads the league in block shots. And uh, interestingly, they got a freshman on their team named Mike Isolino, whose dad obviously, uh, you know, he's not in the rotation, but just a little bit of a sidebar. Uh, Elijah's and Kiss are playing at a very high level. It'll be a really good test to open that homestand. Absolutely. You know, I think, I think they're nine in a row. I know they're nine and one, but since they're lost early in the conference play to Wagner, they've rattled off a bunch in a row. And a big part of that has been Peter Kiss. He's third of the country in scoring and uh, doing it in a variety of ways, free throw line, driving the basketball, making threes. And, you know, obviously when you have a guy like that on the perimeter and then inside out, you know, having a guy that can block shots and protect the rim, you know, they're hard to prepare for. The big thing for us is we look back on our previous game, you talked about the two numbers, rebounding and turn, no, turning the ball over. We turned the ball over too much in the, in, the, in the first half and then gave them too many free runs in the second half, especially at their place. And they're a talented team. Uh, they're very explosive on offense. Um, they've got a lot of different weapons, you know, those two guys you mentioned, but they have some guys around them. You know, the, the kid Charles Pride really is a stat, uh, stat stuffer for him. He rebounds, I think he leads him in rebounding. He's also, I think, second in scoring. He takes care of the basketball. You know, some of the things that he does, you know, in the shadows of those two, it's kind of hard when you're, you know, you're averaging 18 points a game and eight rebounds, but he does it in a very quiet uh, fashion. So it'll be a good challenge for our guys. And, you know, the, as we talk about Mike's son, I saw him warming up and, and before the game, and man, I had flashbacks. I told I told him he that after the game. Like I said, man, I had flashbacks of watching your dad warm up at Mansion Park when I was a high schooler, and you know, then, then, then watching him and playing against him. And you know, he shoots the ball just like his dad. And I know that uh, you know, and in time, he'll he'll have a good career at Bryant. And uh, but it's just when I mean, you see them, and I had flashbacks of of Mike, and I had an interaction with Mike because. Well, young, young, young Mike, and then you know his, his dad afterwards. Just it was it was neat to see him in uniform, and I know he's chomping at the bit, to, you know, to, to continue to build his career. Well, we're chomping at the bit to see it at home. It's been a long time on the road. We get five of the next six at home, and uh, the students are back. Uh, you've noted the band and what a difference they make. It uh, should be a fun environment here in the next couple of weeks. It's, it's certainly nice to be home, and you, know, you want to be playing your best basketball this time of the year, so let's, you know, the, the plan is to use this and create some momentum as we go into March. Rob, thank you. Good luck against Brian. Thank you, Pat. When a student comes to St. Francis University, they come with gifts and talents that are unique to them. It's our role to help those students become the person that they are meant to be.
Pat Farbaugh with St. Francis senior forward Marlon Hargis. His team home for five of the next six after plenty of sleeping out of a hotel and a lot of away games. You get to be home for a stretch. First off, Marlon, thanks for joining me. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here. 6'7", 205, and a very versatile player out of Mays Landing, New Jersey. Played two seasons at Holy Cross, Marlin did, the 18, 19, and the 19, 20 seasons before joining the program midway through last season. He's played in all 21 games, eight starts this season, averaging 7.2 points per game and 2.9 rebounds per game and has had the hot hand of late. He scored in double figures in two of the last three. He had 13 in our last win over Sacred Heart here at home, 10 in a loss last week against Wagner. You're uh, shooting the ball pretty well right now. Do you feel comfortable out there on the offensive end? Yeah, well, um, my, my teammates, um, Coach Kerr, my teammates are definitely putting me in positions to like to get open shots. Um, teammates are, are finding me the ball and they, they've been falling um, as of late. So Rob and I were talking about the rebounding. Yeah. And so has gone our team. Uh, it, it's been based on the rebounding. When yeah. we've rebounded well, we've enjoyed success. Uh, when we struggled on the glass, uh, we have not. Uh, if you could touch on that from a coach's perspective, is that something that you guys are making a concerted effort to really hit that glass hard? Yeah, well, from a, just from a winning perspective, it's hard to win if, if, you, if you don't rebound. So um, the, last, the last couple games, um, we've been out-rebounded. Out and. Um, when, when you're not, when you're allowing offensive rebounds, the other team's getting way more shots than, than your team as well. So that, that just adds on. But um, as of rebounding, that's definitely something we're we're trying to lock into um, for this this next game against Bryant, and um, and uh, hopefully hopefully we can get it done. You're an early childhood education major. I'm I'm actually I was I actually um, changed majors and I'm majoring in psychology. Psychology, and what yeah. do you hope to do? down the road with your degree in psychology down the road i'm still trying to i'm still trying to find out what i'm going to do but i think i'm going to take it into the education course okay so um i'm majoring in psych and then i have a minor in in um, general education so i'm going to see if i can mix it too so we're playing bryant on an inbounds play last year against bryant you had a dunk that uh has been promoted uh by the university got some attention at the regional and even the national level is that the best dunk you've ever had in your high school and college career? I would say in my high school and college career for sure. Um, my best dunk ever was probably in, in AAU. I, I had an in-game 360, but that's, that's AAU. That's not like um, school. So for school, um, the, the one against Brian Daly was definitely probably my best dunk. Okay. Yeah. You're playing at St. Augustine, a powerhouse program uh, in uh, Atlantic County, played for the Hermits. and. You left that program. This is a remarkable number. The winningest player for St. Augustine in its history at 108 victories. Uh, that's an incredible number. I mean, it, 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 you had so much success with that team. If you could just touch on uh, what that was like. No, that, that, um, that was awesome. Like, obviously, you can't win that many games unless you have a great coach, you, you have great teammates. So, um, they're the. Um, my school, the prep, we call it the prep, coached by Paul Rodeo. He's a great coach, um, one of the most um, winningest coach in South Jersey history. Um, him and also Bob Hurley are, are like the top two. But um, I played with some great guys. Coach at St. Anthony's. Exactly, yeah, yeah. But I played with some great guys. I played with um, Saeed Nelson. He went to American University. He's now playing overseas. Um, Justin Mutz, he's playing at Virginia Tech right now. Um, Austin Kennedy, Walt Harvey. We, I just came in and um, we, we had a lot of guys that, that, that were going. So, um, yeah, like playing there was awesome, and we definitely won a lot of games. So, yeah, Saeed graduated in 16. Did you play two years with yeah. Nelson? Yeah. And Anthony Farmer Anthony played Farmer at St. Augustine, uh, played at Rutgers from 05 to 09, so he was before you. And then Isaiah Morton, Isaiah who Morton too, yeah, played at Marist, and then uh, Cal State, uh, San Bernardino. Uh, that kind of competition that you faced at St. Augustine, it had to prepare you first at Holy Cross up in Worcester and now for the kind of competition you see here. Yeah, well, yeah, um, it, it definitely did. Um, high school was always fun and, and it was definitely um, competitive. So even um, I played against uh, Miles, Miles Thompson. He, right. he went to Camden and uh, we, we had some battles in high school too. So yeah. yeah. It's funny how you come full circle and, uh, yeah, and right. end up with uh, Miles out here. Mm -hmm. 
uh, in Loretto. Well, it's been fun watching you play, Marlon. You've been really uh, contributing significantly, both ends of the court. We mentioned the offensive numbers, but certainly on the defensive end as well. It's going to be nice to have some games at home and yeah. have our crowd and, and have our support network here supporting the team. Good luck this week, uh, this Thursday against Bryant and, and throughout the rest of the season. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.